Hi, everybody. My name is Pete Frizzella. I'm a developer advocate on the Google Analytics team. I'm joined here today with uh, Andrew Wales. He's a developer programs engineer on the team. Um, so this is just another uh, quick update. We want to do a recap of what's taken place in the last month or so, give you guys a little bit of heads up on some new features that came out, possibly do some changes that may have taken place that you should be aware of. Uh, so with that, we'll just get started and, and get right into it. And Andrew's going to take it away with uh, a little bit about Analytics.js and some collection changes. Yep. And actually, we've got a couple changes to uh, uh, cookie domain configuration and cross-domain stuff. So we'll check it out right now. Um, so the first thing I wanted to highlight was that we now have this thing called automatic cookie domain configuration. So before, with uh, Analytics.js or even GAJS, you had to uh, specify uh, what domain you wanted the cookie to be written on. Now we let you supply this auto argument for Analytics.js. And what that means is when you do that, um, Analytics.js is going to write the cookie at the highest level domain possible. So if, for example, you were trying to write a cookie, or if your site was example.co.uk, um, Analytics.js would try to write to co.uk. That would obviously fail. Um, and the next domain we would try would be example.co.uk. That would succeed, so that's where we'd write the cookie to. Um, so this is kind of the new default way to set up your cookie domain. Um, and it should work in all of the main use cases, like one site with multiple subdomains, or if you're working with multiple domains, et cetera. So it simplifies that whole process. Sure. So this has been actually probably around for a little bit. But yeah. it was just recently announced that change logs and, and officially added to the, to the Right, yeah. So we actually had it out for a bit, but we just added it to the docs. And we updated all our code snippets on dev sites. So this is now like the default way to implement. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. So the next. Uh, Update is for cross-domain auto-linking uh, for forms. Um, so for those of you who are already using it, we already offer an auto-linking plugin for Analytics.js that um, will automatically append the parameters that you need to any links that are pointing to another domain so that you can track across those domains successfully. Um, but what we just added with this update was the ability to make this work for forms, so both uh, get and post forms. You add this uh, true argument at the end uh, here. And that um, will we'll try to append those parameters to the end of the um, uh, form action as well. So one thing about this one, though, you definitely want to make sure you test this on your site before you actually deploy it. Because um, so there may be some cases where this, if you have something custom going on uh, with JavaScript on that page, it might not uh, work in all cases, but it should work in most. So just make sure you test it out before you deploy it. And again, just another way to make things simpler for cross-domain tracking. And then the last one, um, last update, this was actually out for a little bit as well, but we just got it documented. Um, this is enhanced link attribution for Analytics.js. Um, so this was a feature that existed for GAJS. Uh, what it does is it lets you, um, it lets your in-page, it makes your in-page analytics reports more accurate because it allows you to disambiguate between links on the same page that are pointing to the same URL. Um, so really quickly, the way this one works, um, once you load the uh, link ID plugin, which you'll see there. Um, basically, if you have a link on the page that's pointing to a URL, in this case, like page two, um, when a user clicks on that link, we're actually going to write uh, the link ID um, to a cookie. And if that link, for example, if that anchor element didn't have an ID, we would look up in the DOM to try to find a parent element that did have an ID, and we'd use the first one that we could find. Um, and then on the next page, uh, when you actually send the page view, will include whatever that element ID is uh, in the hit as part of this link ID parameter. Uh, and that's the way we're able to, in the in-page analytics report, tell that users came to this page too, not from some other link, but from this specific next button, for example. Um, so because of all that, because we rely on um, element IDs to make this work, uh, it's really going to be most accurate when all of your links have unique uh, IDs, um, or at least their parent elements should at least have uh, unique IDs. So it looks, it'll look up the, the actual DOM to check if there's IDs above or right. in the parent elements? Yeah. Exactly. And that's yeah. actually configurable. So you'll see, um, I think we're showing you an example of the code snippet, but you'll see that there's a couple configuration options. You can configure like the name of the cookie, how long that cookie is going to last. But you can also tell us how many levels up in the DOM you want us to look sure. um, for that element ID. Cool. That's a nice little addition. Yep. OK, moving on to uh, the APIs. Uh, we just, like last week or so, I think it was, we announced uh, three different um, uh, changes for the multi-channel funnel API, core reporting, and management API. So there's a few things, um, some of its new data, and a couple different features. Um, so the first thing um, is multi-channel funnels. We added some additional data around AdWords, um, conversion paths, and uh, interactions. Um, so it's, this is more around the IDs. So we, we already had pathing and interactions for AdWords. Um, things like ad group and campaign, but this uh, allows you to query for um, IDs now that are associated with those specific um, dimensions. 
So it's pretty straightforward. You can go and look at the um, reference doc for the multi-channel funnel and see the this new data is in there and get some descriptions um, for these particular dimensions. The next thing is the core report and API. Um, we've added some new data again to the core report and API. Um, the minute was actually something that a lot of people had requested to have uh, minute level data, and now we actually have this. Uh, so you can query by minute, which is pretty uh, pretty impressive actually when you do it for a long period of time. It's right, crazy right. you get that much data back. Um, and then we have the nth minute, which is kind of an indexed uh, value for, um, which will show you basically index values from the over the time period that you've specified. Um, and then if you have the audience reports enabled uh, within Google Analytics, you, we also added some dimensions and metrics uh, around the audience report reporting data. So um, this is now available through that. So if you have the access to that data, uh, you can now pull this out through the Core Report API. And again, take a look at the um, query uh, dimensions and uh, metrics explorer. Uh, the link is there at the bottom. And this is uh, where you can go and look at all these new the new data and see um, exactly uh, descriptions and things like that and whether they're, they're allowed in segments. Now, is minute is uh, that also new in the front end as well? Yes, yeah, so this was mentioned? also so you might have seen it also in the uh, front end of so the web interface. You would have seen it shown up there, mm -hmm. uh, and then it was released through the API a few days later. Cool. So, cool. yeah, it's available in both places. Uh, we also enabled um, segmentation for a few different. Uh, so there's source medium. This is a new, it's a relatively new dimension. We added source medium, which is combination or concatenation of source and medium. Um, so this is also now allowed in segments. Uh, and then we have local item revenue, which is uh, also now allowed in segments. Um, so not all dimensions and metrics can be used in segments. And you can go to the um, dimensions and metrics explorer again. There's actually an option to select um, on the front page. There's a little checkbox there, and you can you can select that, and it'll show you which dimensions and metrics are allowed in segments. And then also, if you view the description of any dimension or metric, it'll indicate whether it's allowed in segments. So these two have now been changed to yes, allowed in segments. And local item revenue is revenue in the local currency? The currency, yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. OK, cool. Uh, the next thing is the data table um, response format that we've added to the core report API. Um, so this is if you use a core report API and, you make, and you've made any requests, you'll know that the Data comes back, and there's kind of two main components of that data. There's the column headers, and then there's a the rows object. And the rows contains all of the data um, ordered by dimensions and followed by metrics. So in this example, we have some data for the query that says it's Google Nexus 7 is the mobile device info, I think is the, the dimension in this case, and then the metric of 180. So this is kind of like the default standard response you would, you would always see with the core point API. However, we know that a lot of people want to take this data and use it in some sort of visualization. And one visualization tool uh, API that we have here, obviously, is the Charts API. Um, so part of the Charts API, one of the formats that's used quite extensively is this data table format. So we've added some capabilities now to the Core Report API that allows you to get data back returned in this data table format. So this is what the default response would look like. And this is what the response would look like um, with this new parameter. So if you make a query to the Core Report API now, you can specify this output query parameter. And if you set it to data table, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. So instead of the rows object sitting um, within the response, you're going to have a new data table object. And that's going to contain uh, two separate uh, lists. There's going to be a columns list, which indicates the IDs, labels, things. This is the data table format for basically column headers. Uh, you'll get that. And then you'll also get the rows, but this is within the data table. You get this rows, which contains your data. So it's a similar set of data, but it's in this data table format. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about this is that you can take this data table, uh, extract it out of the uh, as, as an object, and actually feed it right into Google Charts, the visualizations, and it'll just work with that particular, uh, like there's pie charts, there's uh, columns, there's all these yeah, different right. different uh, visualizations that are available. Uh, and this response format works directly with them. So yeah. um, this makes it a little bit easier um, to, get, to go from like requiring the data to actually getting it in, in yeah. a chart and stuff yeah. like that. That's awesome. So it's really nice and easy. Um, so another important change that you should be aware of if you're using these dimensions um, and metric here is that we've deprecated three um, columns here. So one is the is mobile. So this is uh, to, this was a dimension that indicated yes or no whether the the, the, the visit was um, on a mobile device. And we had the similar thing for is tablet, and then we had the entrance bounce rate. And these have been deprecated. So um, I, I encourage you to go read the data deprecation policy, and this explains kind of the process that we take to deprecate dimensions and metrics, and also uh, what you should do and what steps you should take next uh, when we actually deprecate data. There's a re add, uh, removal instructions kind of section in, that, in the, the policy there. So yeah, what's happened here actually is that um, 
we have a device category dimension. And so we've deprecated is mobile, and we've, we've recommended that you use instead mm. uh, device category equals mobile. So you can set that as, um, as part of a, a segment or, or a filter, right? right. So um, this is also the same thing for the is tablet. We're again this is suggesting you should be using device category equals tablet uh, to get exactly the same data. So those are the, the two main uh, things there for the kind of the mobile tablet space. But then for the engine's bounce rate, we should be using instead uh, the visit bounce rate. Right? So these are kind of equivalent measurements. We're just cleaning things up a little bit, making it more consistent uh, for this particular uh, in this particular case. Um, so with this change, this also affected something in the management API. So we have default segments in the management API. You're probably familiar with this. There's always a list of default segments that we provide. Like, and one of them was uh, mobile traffic, mm -hmm. and then there was one like tablet traffic. But that mobile actually included tablet, so it was kind of like confusing, maybe a little bit uh, for some people in terms of what they were getting. Right. Um, so we've cleaned this up and we've changed these around just a little bit. So. Um, You'll know in the, if you use the management API, you'll know that the uh, default segments have an ID associated with them. So they're actually negative numbers. And prior to this change, the negative 11 or minus 11 was, um, was just mobile traffic. And it's been renamed to mobile and tablet traffic. So it includes both of those now. So we include mobile and tablet. Um, that actually hasn't changed from a data perspective. You wouldn't see any change there, actually. Um, but we've uh, also changed. Um, we just made sure the naming is consistent. We have tablet traffic for uh, the negative 13 ID. Mm -hmm. It's tablet only now. And the definition of that segment is device category equals tablet. Um, the definition of the negative 11 is device category equals mobile or tablet, or mobile and tablet, sorry. And finally, we added a new segment. So this is a new default segment that did not exist prior to this change. And it's negative 14 or minus 14, and we have a uh, title of mobile traffic, and this definition of this is device category equals mobile. So if you've been using these segments, uh, make sure you, if you uh, check your queries that you have, if you have any saved queries, you might want to just review them to make sure you're getting the correct data uh, that you think you're getting based on these new segmentation uh, default segments that we have. And you can go and review this at the management API um, reference. There's a, it explains how to list these out and, and get this data back out. Um, so this also has, uh, obviously affects core port and management, because management <coughs> is API is where you get the segments, and the core port and API is where you actually use these segment IDs. Right, right. OK. That's pretty much it for this, uh, for this month or so. Um, we're getting towards the end. The holidays are coming. So yep. um, we'll provide links for all of these changes that we've discussed. And here's some additional resources that you may want to check out. Again, for all the dimensions and metrics stuff, really, you should go check out the metrics, uh, Dimensions and Metrics Explorer. Uh, it has all comprehensive uh, data, and it gets updated automatically with these changes. Um, yeah, with that, thank you very much for joining us today. If you guys want to keep uh, up to date with everything that's going on, we suggest you follow us on the blog. Uh, we have Google Plus and Twitter handles you can follow us at. And yeah. please subscribe to our change logs. A lot of these things get announced through there. Um, this is definitely that's the kind of the, the main source for all this stuff. But thank you guys for joining us. I think that's probably our last show for this year, right? It is, yeah. Holidays cool. are coming. Everybody have a good holiday, have a good New Year's, and we'll see you in 2014.